Hello everyone, it's Benny, and today I'm going to be showing you how to make Lights Out using Redstone. So, even if you don't think you've ever heard of this game before, you've probably seen it at one point or another. It's a game where you have the row of buttons and a row of lights, and any time you hit a button, whatever light is above it will invert, and so will whatever lights are adjacent to it. So like this. Yeah, and you can do this with any button, and the goal is to try to get everything to turn off. And if you ever played this game before, you probably know it's a little bit tricky to do that. So, there you go, you've seen it, it works. And now I'm going to be showing you how to build it. So in order to build this, the first thing you need to do is you need to make a T flip-flop. That's how we're going to get the effect of lights turning off and turning back on. It's sort of like in a toggling fashion. So I'm just going to build a very simple piston-based T flip-flop. You've probably seen a T flip flop somewhat like this before. It's the one where you sort of like have the piston go off and on really quickly, and it makes uh, it makes it drop whatever it's holding. And that'll some power there, and yeah, you've probably seen a T flip flop like this before. So there, and make sure this is on four ticks of delay, and yeah, this is how it works. It just makes it the piston drop whatever block it has. And then when you toggle it again, we'll make it pick it back up again. Very simple T flip flop. So after that, we will need to do this. And you could do this probably a little bit more effectively if you wanted, but I I'm just doing it like this because it's the simplest way to do it. And there. So th now we're just taking the signal upwards. This will be the sort of the output. This will control the light. And as you can see, every time we push it, it toggles. And the reason you need to do it up there is because if you have it down one block below, it will make it affect the piston, so you can't do that. And there. Now the next thing we need to do is we need to set up places for how we're going to make it be controlled in multiple places. Because, you know, every switch has to control a couple of these in order to get the effect that everything adjacent is being toggled as well. So I'm just going to really quickly set that up. And also I'm going to... I put this here. And this is going to be the start of the wire for, for whichever button's going to be in this particular location. And if I, after that, I pretty much just have to pull this all the way down. And this is pretty much one sort of unit for the game. So what I have to do now is I just need to stack this for however many I guess you could say units I'm going to want. So I'm going to do that. Now I need to expand this by one, or it won't stack correctly, so I'll just expand it by one, and then just stack, I'll make seven of them. So now I'll just clear that. And now I have, aside from all these blocks, which I sh don't need, now I have pretty much the whole thing set up. I just need to connect all these wires properly. So first things first, I need to break this because the ones on the edge will only have two sort of switches controlling them, this one and this one. So they don't actually need all three. Now we just need to hook up which, um, how should I say this? Now, well each of these right here, that's going to be the power from a single button. We just need to sort of connect these groups of wires so that they're above all the T flip flops are going to need to affect. So, for example, the very first switch is going to affect this one and the one adjacent to it, which is this one. So, it'll affect these. I'll just put torches above that and a torch there. And that's completed my very first sort of setup. Now, this one is going to affect all three of these, so I'll need to hook it up to all three of them, like this. And just need torch. And there. And you just need to sort of follow the pattern all the way to the end. So it goes a little bit like this. And yeah, at this point it's just sort of filling in everything. And yeah. Almost there. And there. We now have everything hooked up to toggle correctly. 
Now, the only thing left to do is just set up every switch to be affecting the right sort of wire. And, yeah. Which is easy enough. It's, again, a very simple pattern. Why is it raining? And... There. So this is pretty much the entire sort of unit for the game. The only thing left to do, actually, is just hook up the torches, or not the torches, but the lamps and the buttons. So I'm going to put all the buttons in. I'm going to build a cross again. And put all the lamps down. And just to make it look a little bit nicer. There. And now that we have the input panel, we're pretty much done with this thing. And as soon as I add a floor that I can actually stand on, I will sh demonstrate that it works. If I can actually do that. That is. Okay. So now, we have the whole game. It's working. If I push this button, it'll invert those two. Push those. And again. And basically the whole thing is working. So there you go. That's how you make lights out using redstone. Thank you. See you next time.